What's going on, everybody? It is August 16th, 2023, Wednesday. So uh, today we had a uh, ream or rude coil, uh, condenser coil to change out, was leaking. Um, so it went pretty well. I thought it went pretty well. Um, was kind of not happy the way Ream sends their coils. I know there's really not a whole lot they could do about it, but there's a lot of brazing really close to the tubes of the coil. And um, you gotta be really, really gentle with that. So um, most of the time they give you a distribution tube there, but um, they don't on this one. So we had a lot of, uh, a lot of very gentle, low heat brazing on this one. So um, yeah, take a look. All right, guys, we got another one of these today, but this time we're replacing the coil in this one. We diagnosed it last week, week before, something like that. Bad condenser coil. So we're gonna pull this one out, and give it a new one, let's get going. You guys, this is our new coil from Ream. And uh, I could already say Ream is not good at condenser coils. Look at all this brazing we're gonna have to do on this brand new coil. They couldn't give us a distribution tube? Come on now. Come on, Ream, get it together. That's ridiculous. Most of the time you have everything comes out here and you got one distribution tube. But nope, Ream make, is making us braze a whole bunch of stuff on a brand new coil. You suck, Ream. All right, we're recovering now. We're gonna start breaking this bad boy down. Everything comes off. Right, this is where she was leaking at down there. You can see it real good from over here. I thought I had asked for a TXV on this one too, but I guess not. Yeah. So what I'll probably do with the new one, let me take this off, because they just gave me holes here. I'll probably, I'm gonna have to cut these, but I'll probably stub three quarter, I'm sorry, three eighths copper out of each one of these on the new one, and then crimp it down on these cap tubes. I can't believe they did that. I can see why they sent it like that now because all these go directly to, or both these go to the TXV. Still a stupid way to do it. They can do better than that. All right guys, we cut it here and here, and then I cut it there and there. Give myself plenty of space to breeze back or swedge back, whatever I gotta do. I might just unsweat these two down here and reuse those two bends because they got a couple bends on them so I don't have to uh, rebend any 3 8 but I think I'm still going to do my original plan stub a couple pieces of 3 8 out here and just stick these inside of them not as bad as I originally thought but still like I said a bad design from Ream they should at least give us stubs out there because you know it's always it's always sketchy brazen this close to a brand new coil don't like it and they don't send them pressurized either which I don't like also well, I almost forgot about this one here so I'm gonna have to I think I'm gonna unbraze this one here because I'm gonna need that little piece there yeah see I hate having to take this one off the old one and put it on the new one but there's really nothing else I can do All right, because I need this little distribution tube here, I'm gonna have to sweat bolt those out of there. I don't, yeah, they didn't, they didn't give me this little piece here, which is stupid. All right, I'm tired, I'm enough, uh, enough complaining about this. I just gotta get it done. All right, I stand corrected. It did come with at least this distribution piece here, which of course you guys probably already know that from the, few minutes earlier in the video but so I stand corrected on that so we just got these these four to do one two three four okay all right I got these guys out um, I took these little guys out too um, I still think I might do my original plan because I already cut these do my original plan of 
a little 3 8 copper. I think because I don't know if I have a small enough swedging tool to swedge those open, but I might. So I'm still undecided on that, but we'll see. All right, guys, I'm about to braze this one back in. This copper here is extremely thin, so I got to be very careful. Very minimal heat when we do this. Well, this is my old school flaring and swedging kit that I was going to bust out, but I think I'm not going to use these anyway because it looks like I tore this one up taking it out, put a little hole in it. But I believe that little kit I have would have worked. Where's that small one at? I got this little tiny one here that I believe would have went in there, but I'm just going to do my original plan of just using 3 8 copper on it. I got these two guys on right now. I'm about to get busy brazing those in. All right, we got these two done here. I actually had to rebend. This is a new piece of copper here because this one I started brazing on it, it fell out. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna bend a new piece. That's what I did there. You gotta use very little bit of heat when you do something like this because this copper is very thin. Look, this is already messed up right from the factory. So we really gotta be careful on this one. All right, we're gonna get a couple new pieces of copper here. Stub them. Right, I got my little stubs on here now. I'm gonna braze them in next. All right, if you notice here, this copper is very, very thin here. Of course, my copper here is thick, so um, I'm gonna show you a little technique that I use when, I, um, when I'm brazing something like this um, in one second. The first thing is you want only a little tiny bit of heat. You don't want to, you don't want this thing scorching. I'd actually like it a little less than that. There we go. That's good enough. I mean, we got this small itty bitty copper here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start the heat from back here. Because this copper here is so much thinner than this copper. Just heating this part up and then working it in will be good enough. So we're just gonna kind of walk the heat in there, keeping the flame off of it as much as you can. And once we start to get warm, it'll start ru running in there, just like that. You wanna keep the heat back here and just feather it in there. Because if I were to put this whole heat on that thin part, it'll melt. Just staying back here with it. and then walking it right under. If you use too much solder on this one, it's okay. Just as long as you got it good and sealed up. I just wanna get a little tiny bit on the bottom here more. The trick is as little heat as possible. All right, and that one's done. Go ahead and get the point so that you can see. We didn't put the heat right on the joint there, but we, we just feathered it in there. We're gonna do this one next. So just starting back here, slowly moving it up there. It'll, it'll start heating up. it right down. On a typical 3H joint, I mean, you can heat it up enough just from one side and just let all the solder roll down, but you don't want to do that when you have a real thin piece of copper like that. All right, and there we have it. I'm gonna go ahead and take our wet, our wet rag and, and pull it off. Easy as that, guys. Okay. 
All right, new coil in place. Haven't brazed anything yet. Here's what it's gonna look like. I think that's fine. It's better than trying to put those little stubs back. Down here. Got our swedge there, swedge there. And then I actually made a new piece here. This is 5 8 copper, swedged on both sides. This is exactly how they had it. So I just went back the same way. I wish I had a piece of three quarter copper on me because I would have just used three quarter out of here and then dropped the 5 8 down inside the three quarter, but I didn't have a piece of three quarter. I had a piece of 5 8 So basically, yep, it's a swedge inside a swedge. So that's how they had it. That's how I did it. All right, yeah, I'm gonna hook the nitrogen up um, so I can flow while I breeze. Oh, and uh, we got the new filter dryer over here. Just gotta put that on the side here and we'll be good to go. All right, I got everything brazed in. Good, and then our filter dryer is brazed in too. Just gave it some pressure, put it on about a little over 200. Probably bring that up to 300. I just wanted to see if I had any leaks to start with. Doesn't seem like I do. We'll bubble everything and just to be doubly sure, I cleaned up a couple of these brazes too, in and out of the TXV because that looked a little little sketch so I went ahead and just touched those up. We'll see if she holds pressure. Alright, pressure test is done. We did have a leak down there, but we fixed it. Also had a leak on the TXV, fixed that also. So we just threw her on the vacuum now. So we'll let her pull for a while. We're gonna reassemble the uh, outdoor unit while it's full. All right, we got it reassembled now. We're just waiting on our vacuum now. We'll pull it for a while and then charge her up. Easy as that. All right, guys, we just turned her back on now. Got the probes and all hooked up. We're gonna see how she runs. Yeah, she looks like she's uh, dead on. Good. We put just under seven pounds in it. She's looking good. She's got to zip tie some wire in here where we took uh, took the fan off. But hey guys, we might be in good shape. And we're done, guys. There it is. Yeah. So there you have it. We got that one knocked right out, and um and uh, turned out pretty good, I think. Uh, it's back cooling, pressures look good. Pressures look really good, actually. Um, so uh, I think we're good there. So um, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And um, if you can, donate to the channel. Uh, I really appreciate that. I'll put the cash tags down below, uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. And, um, and yeah, I also got some, um, uh, some products down there to check out through Amazon, uh, some good stuff down there. And uh, all right, guys, that's it for this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.